everyone, Kathy here. This is a good week to talk about the war trade. From time to time, geopolitical risk will dominate the headlines. Geopolitical risk can come in a few different forms. Sanctions, a trade war, threats of invasion, and full-scale attacks. If countries involved are superpowers like the US, Russia, and China, the impact of the financial markets can be significant. Even when the countries are smaller, relationships with and potential tensions between superpowers can affect how the financial markets trade. This week, the focus has been on Russia and the Ukraine. Tensions have been boiling for years, but intensified over the past few months with Russia at the cusp of invading Ukraine. What's interesting about this week's market developments is that we got a chance to see how the market responds to allegedly good news and bad. At the start of the week, the U.S. was warning about an imminent invasion of the Ukraine um, by Russia. Midweek, it seemed as if they were willing to continue talks and investors hoped that tensions were easing. But by the end of the week, it became clear that their claim of troop withdrawal was false, with the U.S. Secretary of State telling the U.N. that Russia could invade Ukraine within days. By the time you watch this recording, a lot or very little may have changed, but what won't is the fact that geopolitical conflicts will occur. If it isn't Russia or the Ukraine crisis, it will be something else. The bigger question for us as traders is what do we do when conflicts brew? The most important thing to know is that when it comes to bad news, investors always sell first and ask questions later. And when they sell because of uncertainty, it may be political, economic, or social, the declines are almost always swift and aggressive and last longer than most would expect. That's why on Thursday, the Dow Jones Industrial Average saw its largest one-day decline of the year. So sell first and ask questions later. Let's explore that a little further. When investors are nervous, they sell stocks, at, which, is risk, which is negative for risky assets. In the world of currencies, that means that currencies that are sensitive to global growth, like the euro, the Australian dollar, the New Zealand dollar, tend to perform poorly. Investors will also unwind trades that are funded by low interest rate currencies like the Japanese yen and Swiss franc, two currencies that tend to rise when stocks fall and investors are nervous. Geopolitical uncertainty is also good for gold. So in other words, the war trade is to sell the assets of the country being threatened. It could be the currency, local stocks, sell the broad market indices, buy gold, buy the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc. These conflicts are usually brewing for some time, and as the tensions escalate, you should be trading smaller positions with wider stops. Some of my trades went sour on more than one occasion this past week due to news bombs, but we still ended up the week up 130 pips because of my next piece of advice, which is that when geopolitical uncertainty is high, fade the rallies. This is not because Putin can't be trusted but because until an official government agreement or a deal is reached with one side or both backing down, investors will always be skeptical of positive rumors. So another tip for the war trade is to fade the rallies because almost inevitably, there'll be false news flow before we finally know how things shake out. And even if a conflict is resolved, the recoveries are generally short-lived. Now let's talk up, recap what we just talked about. The war trade is to sell assets of the country being threatened, sell stocks, buy gold, buy the Japanese yen and Swiss franc, use bigger stops with smaller positions, and fade the rallies. Of course, every scenario is different, and all of these assets may not move the way we think each and every time, but is no doubt a good framework for us to use for the war trade. Using some of these principles is exactly what helped us make 130 pips this past week. So let's now take a look at some of those trades. So with BK Forex, we ended up the week up 170 pips in our Forex trades. 130 for our Kathy trade signals, which are our day trades, and only plus 40 because we got stopped out in one of our trades for our smooth 40 trades. But still, 170 pips for the week, which is pretty good. Now, in terms of the opportunities that we had, one of the trades we took was we sold Euro Swiss at 104.58. And I want to show you this trade. So taking a look at Euro Swiss, let's go over here. I'm going to expand this to you. So we sold Euro Swiss um, right at the New York Open, right around here. Sold it down for a move, a nice move lower. We also 
had um, traded euro dollar, which eventually worked out, but we bailed. But at the end of the week, we tend to be much more um, defensive. Overnight, we hit our Kiwi CAD target, we hit our Kiwi Swiss target, so very, very nice moves there. You know, we start trading um, at the beginning of Asia, and if we take a look at um, Asia trade, just give me a second to scroll back to the 13th. What we had is we started the week off on Sunday night in Asia, and we put on a few trades. We put on a short Kiwi dollar trade, short Aussie, short Kiwi CAD, short Aussie CAD, always with our charts. And you can see we had a very nice zip sell signal here where the candle turned white and with a red background signaling a sell trade. We also had an Aussie dollar zip sell signal right over here. Um, we had Kiwi CAD zip sell signal. Well, actually, no, just a Kiwi CAD zip sell zone and an Aussie CAD zip sell zone. So I give the reasons for the trade. We were very bearish Kiwis on Sunday night because the PSI, New Zealand Service Sector Index, dropped to a three month low in January, following the decline in the manufacturing index. US yields were rising, the Fed minutes were expected to be hawkish. We ended up hitting um, first target in Kiwi dollar, thanks some more pips, um, also close Aussie dollar and Kiwi CAD for profits. And in a very short period of time, you know, by in an hour worth of trade, we banked 86 pips for a quick night's work. Monday was challenging. Monday, we had a lot of back and forth because I think Monday is when we had the news bomb um, where we started talking about how, you know, I think it was um, the, the headline that said that the diplomat, um, Russia's diplomat, recommended that Putin um, continue talks and his response was a one word response and that was good. So we started off the day with some short euro trades. Um, but, you know, to be honest, they didn't really work all that well. New York was very hard to trade this week. But back to Asia. Back to Asia. We put some trades on during the Asia session, which were short dollar CAD, short Swiss yen, short dollar yen, short dollar Swiss. Really nice Swiss yen zip sell signal right there. Um, and also really nice dollar Swiss zip sell signal with the white candle over here. And, you know, I woke up in the morning and you know how much I love waking up to profits. Target and Euro dollars hit, Target and Dollar CAD was hit, Target and Aussie Yen was hit. Target and Dollar Swiss was hit. But unfortunately, we're stopped out because overnight news flow um, and volatility and we stopped out before it actually moved to Target. But, you know, that happens. And then we traded some more on um, Tuesday. We didn't trade on, we traded on Wednesday. Um, we didn't trade on Wednesday morning because it was retail sales. So we don't trade on um, retail sales day in the US. So we don't trade the Asia session. But came back Asia evening on Wednesday, which is pretty much Thursday morning, laid out a bunch of trades. Um, you can see my, my targets. Aussie yen, Aussie dollar hit target. Swiss yen should hit target. And, you know, this is how we ended up the week with um, 130 pips in the Cathy Trade Signals and 40 pips in Smooth 40. That's in addition to all of the nice pippage that um, my partner Boris managed to bank for our team. 75 pips on Friday, 65 pips on Thursday, 95 pips on Wednesday trading um, uh, gold, Dow, NASDAQ, crypto. If you want to check out what we do, I encourage you to go to bkforex.com. Um, and, you know, we trade every day and we'd love to have you as a member of the team. Thank you.